Hi there. Thank you very much for playing the beginner's guide. My name is Davy Reedon. I wrote the Stanley Parable. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at dav. Hi, my name is Kevin. I run a channel called Pacifist Run, and I wanted to take a look at Davy Reedon's most recent title, The Beginner's Guide. If in this video you feel like there's anything I missed, please feel free to email me at p-a-c-i-f-i-s-t-r-u-n-c-h-a-n-n-e-l at gmail.com. Okay, the joke's over. The Beginner's Guide is a weird beast. Over the course of about two years, I've tried writing about it several times over. It plays so many different parts that are near contradictory to one another. It tells a cautionary tale about attempting to derive meaning about an artist from their art. The game seems to heavily imply that the answer to that should always be no. However, having previously taken an interest in Davy Reardon and his perspective on game design, I know at a very basic level what personal experience Davy went through to create this game. So, is the creation of the Beginner's Guide telling me not to look there? But then again, Davy Reardon also wrote The Stanley Parable, and a core mechanic of which is not listening to the narrator's instructions. Does this mean that Davy Reardon also believes that sometimes it's okay to not heed the direction of the narrator, and that it is okay to view Davy's game through the lens of his personal experiences? All of these are perfectly legitimate answers, and each question feeds into the other, so there's no real, true answer. So I'll just say fuck it and do it anyway. Up front, I'd like to mention a couple of things I'd like to discuss. A basic synopsis of the game for you heathens that don't heed spoiler warnings and the identity of Coda, and how this relates to a personal experience Davy Reardon had. The game begins with us loading into a Counter-Strike map where Davy, a fictional version of the creator Davy Reardon, explains that the map was one of the first games made by a friend of his named Coda. Coda and he had some sort of friendship that eventually faded, and Davy thinks that there's a lot of inspiration to be gathered from Coda's games and their execution. Over the next hour and a half throughout the Beginner's Guide, we exclusively look at the games that Coda made and listen to Davy's take on them. All while playing these games, we learn about the intricacies of Coda and Davy's friendship, and eventually a period where Coda's games begin getting dark and depressing. They begin to reflect a sort of inner turmoil that Davy sees as a cry for help. Davy tells us that he took it upon himself to show Coda's games to friends of theirs in order to make Coda feel validated and that their work was good, because this is the sort of thing that Davy seeks out. Davy does not see Coda for another seven months. One day, he gets sent a game from a burner email address, one last game from Coda called The Tower. It is a game that, as Davy describes, seems to despise the player for trying to play it. Davy hacks the game for us to make it playable, and we learn in a series of notes left by Coda and by Davy's own admission that he began editing Coda's games and changing the meeting within them to fit his own worldview. That he betrayed Coda's trust in modifying his art and misrepresenting Coda's feelings to other people. That Davy's presence was so poisonous to Coda, which is what caused game design to feel draining to them in the first place. Davy ends his narration with some self-reflection and regret in the way that he treated his friend. I think I need to go. I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. Coda's games deal with a few recurring themes. Inspiration being one. Inspiration can be seen in the Stair game, the Island game, and the Mobius game. All are about the creative process and baggage that come along with it. Social anxieties, brought to life by the notes, stage, machine, and classroom game. Self-progression, which is characterized by the house cleaning game, 
and prison games, and specifically Coda's Motif. Coda's Motif is a puzzle that keeps being referenced throughout the game. It's the only puzzle in the game. The idea is that there is a door in front of you with a switch on the front of it. Throwing the switch opens the door to a dark room with another door on the other side that you cannot open unless you throw the switch again, closing the door behind you while you are inside the dark space. This is a delightfully simple symbol for moving forward. To move forward, you cannot look back. You have to trust the path to open for you. And it is a scary thought in game and in life. What if you close the door and there's no switch on the other side? What if you can't move forward? Well, that's exactly what Coda portrays to Davy. In the very last motif puzzle, you open the door intended for Davy, walk into the darkness, and then the walls of the room slowly converge on you as you realize there is no second switch to open the second door. No way out. Just the same, Davy is trapped, feeling invalidated by his own work and unable to break his obsession with Coda's. The other clever use of the motif was in the machine game. Honestly, I played this game about 10 times and I just noticed, but during the machine game, where the character representing Davy elects to destroy all of the machine's previous games, the machine is named Coda, by the way. In doing so, the avatar falls through the door that typically begins the puzzle, implying that they are being made to go through a change in their lives by a force as out of their control and natural as gravity. There are several instances where Davy does not get ideas that Coda attempts to portray in their games. The most prominent of which, to me, was in the Stairs game. The idea behind the Stairs game is that it's a metaphor for the creative process. You climb up a flight of stairs about three quarters of the way, similar to how you get the meat of an idea, and you just need a few more steps to complete it, but man, those last steps are taking a lot longer than you thought they would. It's like they're more difficult than they should be. At the top of the stairs awaits a room full of ideas and concepts for game design that you're meant to work for. But Davy doesn't care about that, so he makes a button that allows you to skip those last steps and just obtain the fruits of the creative labor anyway. Davy seems to not stake very much claim in things that Coda finds important enough to include while at the same time worshipping these seemingly innocuous things that probably were not even a second thought to Coda. My last point on Coda's games is that there is a particularly strong case to be made for Coda being male to female transgender. To begin with, all of the pronouns in Coda's games feature female pronouns used on the main character. We can probably assume that this is not something that Davy changed, since Davy always refers to Coda with male pronouns and that might have been something that he changed if he wanted to make it fit his worldview. In addition, there are two instances of voice acting in Coda's games. The first being in Escape from Whisper, and the second being in The Island. Escape from Whisper has some pretty obvious voice acting. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That being is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat if you, your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? While in the island, we simply hear audible vocal effects from a crying woman. The woman is later depicted in a prison, trapped. Also, this woman is the only fleshed out character model in the game. Not a disembodied voice or a blocked head on an obvious NPC. This is likely meant to represent somebody. Coda. The voice actress likely did not come from an outside source either. We are told very early on that Coda understood their reputation as a recluse. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh while not impossible, seeing as they gained some sort of working friendship with Davy, I sincerely doubt the idea of Coda enlisting the assistance of a voice actress for their game. That's not how hermits operate. Does this mean that Davy is misgendering Coda throughout the game? Given Davy's previous carelessness, I certainly think it's possible. Then, as Davy might say in addition to, maybe he enjoys prisons, maybe he just enjoys female protagonists. 
If that's the case, then I truly have no answer. It's up to Davy Reed and himself to confirm, I would suppose. In doing any research on this game, you will inevitably see the same dumb question repeated. Is Coda real? And the answer is no, of course not. But he is based on somebody. To learn who, we have to go back quite a bit. Following the release and breakout success of Davy Reardon's first game, The Stanley Parable, Davy responded to literally every email he received regarding the game. He took every interview offered to him. He made every appearance he was invited to. I don't think it's going too far to say that he was drunk off of the praise. This had damaging effects to his mental health. Supposedly, he became insufferable to be around, citing examples such as a roommate placing a cup of theirs on a table near him and becoming irate at the gesture. How dare you, he thought. I thought we were friends. One friend in particular who did sound design work on the Stanley Parable demo, named Robin, he was particularly toxic toward. Robin eventually pulled Davy aside and told him, When you are around me, I feel physically ill. Now where have we seen this before? And how do I know that the falling out between Coda and Davy was made with Robin in mind? Well, I'm not claiming to be any sort of expert on Davy Reardon's life. And had all of these things not been provided in a public talk that Davy Reardon gave and information that he himself offered up, I wouldn't feel equipped to speculate. But since the information is out there and it seemed like enough people sought the information, I figured I might as well put it up here. Sorry if this seemed obvious to some of you. The Beginner's Guide is well worth your time and energy. Not just to play, but to speculate. Davy Reardon has proven himself time and again to be a pioneer who bridges the gap of the medium between entertainment and art. If you enjoyed this video and want to see others like it, why not share it with your friends? It really helps me out. Also, I've begun a Patreon. I'll be posting essays reliably once a month and am going to be streaming on top of that. Should you be into this sort of thing and want to help my output of videos, go check out that page.